Over the long sweep of history, multifamily is a much more stable real estate sector than the office market or the retail market. Um, industrial is actually a pretty stable sector as well. And the reason for that's a pretty simple reason is when the economy is doing badly, businesses lay off workers, which means they don't use as much office space, which means that the available revenue for office buildings goes down. When the economy is doing badly, people don't shop as much, which means that revenue to shopping centers goes down, which means rents to shopping centers go down. Whereas people still need a place to live. And so what you see are much smaller changes in occupancy rates over the cycle with the rental market than you see with other kinds of markets. Now people do react to bad economy. They're more likely to double up. Kids are less likely to leave their parents if the economy is bad than if the economy is good. So it's not as if the rental sector is immune from cyclical issues. But if you're living in an apartment, chances are you're going to continue living in that apartment regardless of the economy. So you tend to see more stability in the rental sector over time. In some extent, this particular cycle has been good for the rental market in that as people are having to give up their single family homes because they're defaulting on their mortgages, they need to move somewhere. Now again, sometimes they move back in with family members, sometimes they find a roommate, but sometimes they're moving from their 2,200 square foot detached house into an apartment. And so again, it's not as if the apartment market hasn't been hurt. It has been hurt by this cycle, but it hasn't been as devastated as, for example, the retail market. The retail market, the outlook is actually quite poor for a long period of time because so much of U.S. consumption over the last 20 years has been based on borrowing. If you look at the U.S. about 20 years ago, the ratio of consumer debt to GDP was about 60%. Now it's over 100%. What happened is that people's incomes didn't go up very much, but their spending did, and that was because of borrowing. Consumers are not going to be allowed to borrow as much going forward, and that's a good thing. The only way we're going to return to normalcy as an economy is to get consumer borrowing back to more normal levels. But that also means that people are not going to be able to buy as much stuff going forward. And that's why you are seeing certain parts of the retail market, in fact, a large part of the retail market, being hurt very, very badly right now. The exceptions are what we call necessity retail. So shopping centers with grocery stores, with drug stores, are doing pretty well. Um, and the exceptions are, of course, the low end of the market. So if you look at the Walmarts of the world, the Costco's of the world, they're doing OK. But even Target which is a very good business model for retail, which should be very attractive as a place for people to spend money right now, is planning on opening only a very no small number of stores in the next year, which is very different from how they were behaving a couple of years ago.